everybody. Hey, this is John here. This is Paul. George. And Ringo. And we're very happy to be on your program once again. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Beatles News Brief. It's your home for all the news you need to know and all the best talk from the Beatles world. I'm your host, Steve Marinucci. Today we have more about Abbey Road. Our special guest is British Beatles tour guide Richard Porter of BeatlesInLondon.com, who organized the event on Abbey Road last week and gives us some inside info on what happened and a couple of surprises. But first, let's get to some news. Paul McCartney and Pink Floyd's Nick Mason will be among those appearing on a star-studded tribute song to late Wings guitarist Henry McCullough that comes out this month. The song is called Live Long Rock and Roll, and it will also feature Gary Brooker of Procol Harum, Chris Staten of the Grease Band, of which McCullough was a member, and Paul Carrick of Squeeze and Mike and the Mechanics. The album... Uh, on which it will appear is called Bally Wonderland and will be released August 16th. McCullough died in, two, in 2016 at age 72. And uh, magazine cover alert, Paul McCartney appears on the cover here in the States of the latest issue of Closer, the headline Secrets I've Never Told. The uh, promo on the cover says, The music icon opens up about finding love after losing his wife, Linda, and why at 77, he, quote, still feels like that little kid from Liverpool, unquote. The article contains quotes from former Wings guitarist Florence Juber and McCartney bio author Paul, Philip Norman, as well as Paul himself. It also has a picture of Paul and Ringo on stage last month at Dodger Stadium. Ringo Starr is auctioning off a meet and greet at www.charitybuzz.com. It uh, has to do with his performance in Farmingville, New York, on August 17th. The winner will get two tickets to that show and a meet and greet as part of a group. Uh, with uh, And you can bring along a friend. You can get a photo taken with Ringo, but the rules on the auction say no autographs. The latest bid we saw was $1,800. The auction closes August 14th. And Denny Sywell, former Wings drummer, posted on Facebook last week that he'd recently undergone a heart procedure to put in a stent and that he was feeling great. He wrote, I want to thank everyone who sent up prayers and well wishes for me. It was very much appreciated and carried me through the ordeal nicely. Back for round two. Okay, we talked over the weekend with Richard Porter, who, as we said, leads tours of Beatles sites and you can find more information about them on www.beatlesinlondon.com. Richard was in the middle of the huge crowd that showed up last Thursday on Abbey Road to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the shooting of the cover picture. And we talked with Richard about some of what happened behind the scenes. And also, he revealed a thing or two that we hadn't heard. So here's that interview and we'll be back right after it with the latest chart news, including the U.S. billboard listings that were just posted today. So do not go anywhere. I'm here with Richard Porter, direct from London. Hello, Richard. Hello, Steve. Hi, how are you? I wanted to, to get, since you were in the middle of it the other day, uh, what happened at the 50th at Abbey Road uh, on the 50th anniversary. I know they had, uh, Bruce Spicer was telling me they, they had something out in the carport for people yes. to stand in front of. Yeah. Did more people? Yes. Go ahead. Well, basically, I organized the event because I got a Beatle band uh, to dress as the Beatles were. Okay. I, I did a special tour arriving, in the, well, basically walking, across, the idea was to walk across Abbey Road 50 years the minute since the Beatles. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when we got there, there was so many people. Uh, but basically the band arrived in a replica of John Lennon's psychedelic Rolls Royce car. I saw that. Yeah, I saw the, uh, I saw the video of that. Mm-hmm. And they got out and they were dressed as the Beatles were. And it's amazing seeing them getting out the car in, those, in their gear. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the media were absolutely mad. It's gone absolutely mental around the world. And it made the front page news and the Guardian newspaper, one of our national newspapers, front mm-hmm. page news. It's like, what? 
<laughs> there were also there were also some video. I, I saw some video on YouTube of it too. Oh, there's lots. It's everywhere. It's gone yeah. absolutely mad in, in, in a nice way. because It was so nice because people literally all, all over the world were there, mm-hmm. young and old. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the, the reporters said that the amount of love in the air that day was amazing. How many people would you estimate showed up? I reckon about a thousand in all. Really? Now, how many? Usually on. I mean, normally when you, because you do tours there all the time. Yes. How I many people? How many people are there usually? Well, on a weekday, ten or twenty maybe. Oh, really? <laughs> time. So yeah, if that. Did anybody that. anybody famous show up for for this one? Uh no, but there's been rumours going around that Paul McCartney drove down the road in his car. Oh, that day? That, oh, really? No, that's true. i just been reading that a few minutes ago, actually. There's a rumour going around that, that Paul was actually drove... To, he lives just down the road, of course, in Cavendish Avenue. Right. Which is about only about 10 minutes from the crossing, if that walking. Mm-hmm. So there's a rumour going around that Paul turned up. Um, oh. <laughs> but Tony Bramwell was there. Right, yeah, because he posted on Facebook that day. Yeah. That he, he was but, the, there. but the nicest thing that happened for me is the guy that played Paul in the band, a guy called Joe Kane, he proposed to his girlfriend right on the crossing, right in the middle of all, all the world, world media. Wow. I'm glad to say she said yes. That, that, oh, was, wow. that was the nicest part of the day for me. Who were the other, who were the other three guys that, that played the Beatles? Uh, there's a guy called Phil, who's the one guy that played John. Mm-hmm. And the other two guys are from Australia, David oh, okay. Mitchell and Merv. Actually, David lives in um, in Germany now, but Merv flew in from Tasmania just two days before. Oh, my. Literally, the band had only been together. They they rehearsed the day before the gig. We had a gig at the Dublin Castle in Camden where the likes of Madness and Amy Winehouse played. Oh, wow. Okay. So we had a gig there with the band and a great uh, duet called the Fab Twins who were brilliant as well. Mm-hmm. So we had we made a day of it basically. It's just a just great celebration day, and uh, I'm still sort of coming down from cloud nine now. To be honest, it was. <laughs> and you went to you went to the lecture uh, just to to brief people. There was uh, a lecture of, uh, I guess it, it was it Brian Keyu and and yes. the, the and uh, the recording of the Beatles book. Yes. And, and you went to that. I know Bruce Spicer went to that because he told me he was going. Yeah. To that. Um, how was that? That was amazing. And I went with my 11 year old daughter, Lilia, mm-hmm. and uh, doing it, they uh, asked for any people that play piano. And I told Brian beforehand that Lilia played piano and that she went over to their piano with about three or four others. And they played the, um, the final chord of a day in a life mm-hmm. on the pianos the Beatles used. Wow. In fact, she played this, the uh, famous Mrs. Mills piano. Oh, my. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> Did they? Did anybody record? Did you record it? I did. Yeah, I just put it on my Facebook page. Yeah, <laughs> we weren't allowed to fi- film the rest of it, but I filmed that bit. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah. that's 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 fantastic. Um, yeah. Did they did they do anything? I mean, because uh, you know the big th- news over here, besides the 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 crossing anniversary, was the announcement of the box set. Did they do anything externally about the box set? Was there any mention of it or anything like that? Uh, I mean, I've been too busy to really have a look at that, to be honest. Uh, but I mean, nothing, nothing was said. Nothing was said on the on, while you were out on the on the uh, crosswalk or anything like that. Uh, not to us personally, no. Okay. Um, I didn't even get over to the studios because I was so busy. I guys, how many media interviews I gave that day? Right. <laughs> It's kind of organised the thing. And even I mean, inside inside the car park of the studio, they had a kind of basically a, a, a blow up of the Ab, the Abbey Road crossing. You can take your picture on there rather than on the crossing itself. Is it still there? The is, car it still, park. is it still there? No, or that was just that's for the day. Okay. That was just for the day. Wow, that's that's, but, uh, that's yeah. It was, it was amazing. It was amazing. I'm still coming down now. As I said, it's an amazing day. Normally, for people who haven't been there, like unfortunately, like myself, that street is very, very busy, is it not? It can be, yes. And uh, there was some car drive. I mean, they, basically, the, the road, the, there was one policeman trying to control the crowds to start with, and he wasn't having, any much, having much luck. And in the end, of course, everyone was spilled out onto the road. Mm-hmm. 
especially around 11 30 we actually went across you know did the did the picture you know 50 years the minute since the beatles right right and uh everyone spilled out on the road <laughs> There's no, there's no red light there, is there? I mean, no, no, there isn't. I mean, that would defeat the object of the. I mean, the, that's the why the crossing is. It doesn't have traffic lights. It's, it's basically you have the Belisha beacons, which is actually the bit that's listed. It's now a listed building because it can't be now moved or altered without government permission. What right. What actually listed is that the so-called Belisha beacons, which is the flashing, you know, with the, it's the poles with the with these yellowish lights on top. Mm-hmm. Then it's mean- Belisha beacons. That's a, it's, it's a historical site now, correct? It is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Is the is the are the studios? <clears throat> excuse me. Are the studios historical too, or is it just? Yes, a they car- are. They're, they're, it's called listed. Yeah, it's a historical site as well. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's fantastic. That's really fantastic. So what? So anything? Uh, is there anything special coming up within the next few days as far as that goes? As far as uh, the- well, they're still doing the lectures. They, I think mean, it's another couple of weeks of lectures at the weekends. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess a lot of people will come over for that. But in terms of the Abbey Road anniversary, I haven't heard anything else apart, apart from Ringo sort of blurting out when, in an interview that he and Paul are going to be at Abbey Road. I think it's September the 26th or something like that. Oh, re- oh really? That's, that's that, good. I have, I have not heard that. So That's the day before, you know, he, he said that in an interview somewhere, he blurted it out. I think it was doing an interview in the States. And he said about he and Paul going to Abbey Road to, to unveil the album, or as he put it. Um, and, but actually, it was another person said it's going to be the end of August. But I mean, the end of September would mean more obvious because that's when the, when the album came out. Right. So, right. Yeah. And that's when, the, that's when the box set is being released at the end. Yeah, exactly. So wow, that's fantastic. And also, uh, Paul McCartney's doing a book signing here for his new 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 book. Hey, oh, the Grand, Grand Dude. The, the Grand Dude book. Yeah. When's that? He's doing it at uh, in London. Is it Water? I think it's Waterstones. Okay. That's coming up. That's in September. So uh, I guess it'll be around for that. Well, this should be around for that. So whether they do something at Abbey Road around that time, I don't know. I can't, I can't remember what the date is now for that. Yeah. I've been yeah. so busy with other stuff, I almost, almost missed that. But yeah, right, yeah, and, and that's going to be that's going to be one of those things where people are going to line up the night before, like Actually, they have. Before. No, that they're, they're doing it by ticket this time. Oh, they are. Yeah, it's ticketing. Oh, I think okay. the tickets go on sale next week. I think I've been ah, saying so. You know, that's actually a better way because it is. Had, because in the past, that you know, they've had people out there all night, and it's been crazy. yeah. So. Are, are, the, are, the tickets, before, sorry. Are, are the tickets free or do you have to pay? Are they are they selling them? No, they're selling them. Oh, really? But, how, much, how much are they? I can't remember now, but it includes the book, of course. So, oh, um, no. yeah, get the book. Um, oh. But it's obviously really limited, I'm sure. And they, they, yeah. They'll sell just like that, just anything that Paul does here. <laughs> oh, sure. oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you get your, you get your once in a lifetime chance to meet him. I mean, exactly. So, yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, okay. I hope we can. I hope we can talk again sometime uh, when okay. something's going on. Uh, sure. Uh, thank, a, yeah. thank you, Richard Porter, for for talking to us. And um, if you if you see any Beatles uh, hanging around uh, Abbey Road, let us know. <laughs> yeah, we'll do. There's you never know what goes on around Abbey Road. That's for sure. <laughs> I know. I know. All right, Richard. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Cheers. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. Hello, folks. Remember to listen in to Top Gear. And it's on from 10 o'clock till 11.55 in the live programme on Thursday night. And it's got Brian Matthew on it. And also... Dusty Springfield and Carl Perkins. And Mark Winter. And also, folks, us. guess who? But don't let that put you off. Us, where are we? Too. The Beatles. But there don't let go. that put you off anyway, you know. I mean, still listen in. Top Gear on Thursday at 10. Sounds like a good programme. There you go. And now the latest Beatles chart news for the Billboard... Uh, dated uh, August 17th. Beatles 1 is at number 74, down from 71 last week. Abbey Road is at 92, down from 90. And the White Album is at 168, up from 198 last week. On the vinyl chart, Abbey Road is at 8, up from 9 last week. And on the Artist 200, the Beatles are at number 41, up from 52. The latest chart information from the UK on officialcharts.com. The one album is at number 24, up from 26. 
and 67 to 70 is at 97 down from 89. That's from their issue uh, dated August 9th. Looking back in history, on August 12, 1960, Pete Best auditioned for John Lennon, Paul McCartney, and George Harrison, and then joined the Beatles for their trip to Hamburg on August 13, 1966. The Beatles performed at Olympic Stadium in Detroit. What's uh, interesting, though, is that the uproar about John Lennon's Jesus remark had by then spread to Europe, where in Spain and the, the Netherlands there were moves to have the Beatles' records banned. On August 14, 1965, the Beatles performed on The Ed Sullivan Show. The group sang, I Feel Fine, Yesterday, Help, Ticket to Ride, and Act Naturally. On August 15, 1962, Ringo Starr agreed to join the Beatles. He replaced Pete Best three days later. On August 15, 1965, the Beatles performed at Chase Stadium to over 55,000 fans. Uh, happy birthday on August 12th to uh, Apple recording artist Derek Van Eaton. Some of the albums in history released this week, August 12, 1968, Big Brother and the Holding Company's Cheap Thrills. August 13, 1956, Bill Haley and the Comets' Rock and Roll Stage Show. And Gene Vincent and the Blue Caps' Blue Jean Bop. They were both released on the same day. August 13, 1965, The Beatles' Help Album. And August 14, 1964, The Rolling Stones' 5x5. Five five. That's it for now. You can catch our shows on fab4radio.com, beatles Arama, and also on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. Please join our Beatles News and Information group on Facebook for the latest in the Beatles world, and check out our That's What I Want Beatles store for gift ideas for yourself or your favorite people. And you can find links there for both uh, contributing editor Candy Leonard's Beatleness book and my Meet a Monkey Jones uh, Meet, a, blah, 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 Meet a Monkey Davy Jones ebook. And look for our next show. And please, please, please subscribe and please rate us on iTunes. We would love to hear from you. We'll be looking for you for our next show. And until then, this is Steve Marinucci saying, "Be seeing you." that one market fab one thing left to say we'll see you next time